thank you for joining us today at Stanton Memorial uh, for a special service, a continuation of a series on prayer. Today's message has to deal with uh, praying continually with fasting when necessary. We have a need not only to pray but to fast. Fasting can intensify our focus on a special prayer concern. We're going to be talking about that more from the book of Nehemiah as well as from uh, the book of Esther. And so uh, we appreciate you joining us. We hope that it will be a blessing to you. God bless you. I want to invite you to turn with me. Our text this morning is Nehemiah. But before we get to Nehemiah, chapter 1, I would like to be able to get into this with the Lord through prayer. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for you're an awesome God. Give us this privilege to worship you today. And we thank you, Father, for every person here. We know we are here because you wanted us to be. And you have something to teach us, to give us that we can latch on to, that will deepen our relationship with you. So, Father, we know everything belongs to you. And we want you, Father, just to take charge of every area of our life. That you can have possession of it. That you can use us, Lord, and speak through us as your people. So, Father, I pray this morning that as we open your word of truth, that it will come alive in our hearts and our minds. And that we will grow deeper into our relationship with you, Father. That we can discover what you want us to be about as your people. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Some time ago, there was a pastor by the name of Stephen Bly. He pastored a church in Winchester, Idaho. It was his privilege to have the opportunity to get to know a member of his church that was more involved in ministry than a lot of people gave him credit for. He named, his name was Gus Jensen. He was an 84-year-old man, a widower. And he sat in the back of the church every Sunday. Most people thought he was kind of, you know, beyond his years of productivity. But how wrong they were and how wrong the pastor was in thinking that as well. One day, Pastor Bly went to visit Gus at his home, and he made a, a very interesting discovery. He discovered his regimen, his spiritual regimen. First of all, every day, Gus would spend a couple of hours reading and studying and praying, reading God's Word, and spending time with God. And then, afterwards, he followed that with a three-hour walk. And while he was walking, he was also praying. Then, he discovered a young teenage boy in his area. This teenage boy, his name was Anthony. And Anthony was a kid that was continually getting in trouble. Trouble with his parents, trouble um, for others in the neighborhood, trouble with the law, trouble at school. He was just always in trouble. And so Gus decided that he would start fasting for Anthony. And he gave up two meals every day to pray for Anthony. And the pastor asked him, well, how long have you been doing this? And he said, for 40 days. 40 days? He was curious. He said, well, how much longer are you going to do it? And he said, forever how long it takes. Well, on the 51st day, Anthony accepted Christ as his saving Lord. You see, Gus, although 
before, he was still very useful in God's work and service. He was doing something to keep himself in touch and in tune with God. And he had a prayer burden for a teenage boy that needed the Lord in his heart. What a difference prayer can make, yes. coupled with fasting. Yes. A lot of times we don't think too much about fasting. We think that's for somebody else. That's for the super spiritual. Uh, that's for the spiritual elite. You know, so we don't really classify perhaps ourselves in that category. And so we just sort of leave fasting alone. It's good for us. But not good for me. But we need to understand that God's Word teaches us a lot about fasting. Did you know you could find it? Said something about fasting 61 times in the Bible? Did you also know that there were special occasions when fast occurred? Like on the Day of Atonement? It was always coupled with a fast. Did you know that when Esther was in a very serious time of testing in her life, that fasting played an extremely important role in what she was able to do. Look over with me, if we'll take a moment to do that. Look over with me to Esther chapter 4, verse 15. Here was a moment in history, in Jewish history, where the, the king was under the influence of others that were underneath him, but had plotted and schemed and designed a plan to do away with the Jews. And we know that King Esther, Queen Esther, became queen because Vashti did not come into the king's presence when asked. And so she was put aside. There was a process of choosing a new queen. And it was Esther who was chosen to be the queen. Now Esther, her parents died. She was raised by a cousin named Mordecai. And we know that Mordecai and Esther had a, an ongoing, continual uh, friendship and relationship even after she became queen. And Mordecai presented to Queen Esther when this new plan or scheme had been derived by someone who wanted to do away with the Jews and particularly wanted to do away with him. She was confronted with the situation. And we are told that Mordecai was very strong in, in saying to her, and who knows, but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this, in Esther chapter 4, verse 14. And here's Esther's response. Verse 15. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all Esther's instructions. Now, if you read the rest of the story of Esther, you know how it unfolds and how Esther was received by the king with the scepter that allowed her to come into his presence or she would die. She was willing to take that risk after a season of fasting. And so we know that God was involved because the hearts of the people 
the heart of Esther and those close to her were all fasting. They were getting ready for what God was going to do. And they were preparing themselves by being focused on God. And they got that focus through fasting. Interesting story, huh? Well, this morning, we're going to be looking at another situation. Turn with me now to Nehemiah chapter 1. In Nehemiah, we're going to read about a man who had a heart for his people too, the Jewish people. And we see how fasting played a role in, in what was going on with, with Nehemiah and how his heart went out for the people that had turned away from God. And we read the words of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and distress. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept for some days out of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeemed by your great strength and your mighty hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servant who delight in remembering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. Here, Nehemiah is pouring out his heart to God. He has seen how the Jewish people had turned from God. Even he himself was admitting his own sin in this, in this prayer to God. And it was through this time of, of fasting and prayer that, that, that he was a broken man. And that he was crying out to God. For, for help and healing. Now, I want to say some things about fasting that we learn from, from the Bible here. First of all, fasting is important because it intensifies our focus on a specific prayer concern. It intensifies our focus on a specific prayer concern. The prayer concern of Gus for a neighbor. Fasting. Pray and God answered. The prayer concern that Esther had to go to the king on behalf of her people, a specific prayer coupled with fasting brought God's presence and power into that situation and it brought about deliverance of the Jewish people from a, a plan that was designed to, to destroy them. We must always remember that 
God wants us to be focused on Him. Fasting is a way to help us to allow our bodies to help us to be mindful of the fact of the, that we need to be focused on a very special issue of prayer. We know back in Matthew, before Jesus went out into the wilderness, we know that as he went out, he was on a 40-day fast. As he faced Satan and all of the arsenal of temptation Satan was going to throw at him, we know that Jesus was in a state of prayer and fasting and ready for whatever Satan had to throw at him. He was prepared. And I believe that his focus and his, his energy was so in touch and in tune with the Father that there was nothing that, that Satan was going to be able to, to, to throw at him that would distract him from the purpose of the Father. So in the midst of a fast, when Satan appeared to him and he said, why don't you prove yourself? Why don't you turn that stone into bread? Don't you know Jesus was hungry at that point? Of being in a 40-day fast to turn that, that stone into, into bread? But then Jesus answered and he said that man does not live by what? By bread alone, but by what? By every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. You see, what's more important than food is our relationship with God. Uh, the Word of God is more important to feed our soul than the bread that we eat. We must understand that we need some special times of prayer and fasting. Now, I realize not everybody can fast and stay away from food. If you're diabetic, you cannot fast. You need to do it under your, the instruction of your doctor. You need to make sure if there's a questionable health issue you have, then you need to address a health issue and follow the instructions of your doctor. But if you're healthy, there is nothing wrong with taking some time away from food and spend that time with God in prayer. It's important that we have some special times as Jesus was embarking on his ministry. He needed some special time with the Father. He needed to be able to be ready and equipped to go up and do the public ministry that now the time had come for him to do. And he did it by beginning with a fast. We know that fasting is important because it intensifies our focus on a prayer concern. That's the first thing we must understand. But secondly, fasting is important because it is an act of humility to cry out to God for his help. And when we are putting aside everything else and we're just focusing on God, we're crying out to God. We're in a state of humility. We want to give up everything just to know what God wants. When we are showing God the intensity of our interest in Him, He will demonstrate His power with us. An 84-year-old man giving up two meals a day for 51 days to see a teenage kid come to know Christ. You see, a focus in prayer and fasting can make a difference in the life of somebody that needs to have a life change in their life. There's a guy named James Dotson. How many of you have heard of him? Has a ministry. It's called Focus on the Family. He has a syndicated radio program. Do you know that something I didn't know about. Then in the year 1971, he had two children. What he decided to do was to set aside one day a week to fast, a 24-hour fast for his kids. Every day, every week, he set aside a day to fast and pray for his children. 
So he is not only the director focused on the family, he was focused on his family in a practical way. God makes a difference when we give him time and we are focused in on him and, and we are focused in on, on setting aside this, this effort and, and make sure that we're not distracted. Fasting can be a very beautiful experience of, of drawing closer to God and understanding how we can play our part as parents in the lives of our kids. But also, fasting is important because it is not for show to others, but it is designed to give our complete attention to God. You see, Jesus spoke about fasting too. Along with him doing fast in his own relationship with the Father, he also gives some instruction about fasting in that, that well-known Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, where he speaks this way to his disciples. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put on oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So, fasting is not for a public show. Or to say that you're more spiritual than somebody else because you're fasting. Or give some impression that, that you have a, a better life on God than, than somebody else. No. If that's your motive, then you're missing out on the blessing that God wants you to experience. It must be in secret. It must be something private between you and God. It must be something that is focused and the motive is God. To connect with Him, to understand His will, to be focused on what He wants for you. And seeking God's purpose in it all. Just to let God work and show us what He wants us to do and how He wants us to do it. So Esther, before she could approach the king, she was in a three-day fast. After completing that three-day fast, then she was ready. You see, a lot of times we jump off and do things before we're spiritually prepared for what God wants to do. And we're getting ahead of God rather than letting God lead. Fasting helps us to stay humble before the Lord and realizing that God is the one who must lead the way and show us the right time to do what he wants us to do. Now, there are lots of different kinds of fasts. We normally think of a fast as total denial. That was certainly the case with Esther and what they did call them to do was a total fast. That means nothing. No water, no food, nothing. That is total denial. But then there's other kind of fast that's water or liquids only. Then there's another type of fast where you leave out meat. There's another kind of fast where you get rid of all junk food. I kind of get some Snickers here. <laughs> That was, yes, Snickers. We're getting rid of Snickers. <laughs> that means junk food. They know that's where my favorite candy bar is. That's why they're snickering at me. <laughs> we need some time to get aside, away from those types of things. Why? It is because we need more discipline in our life. Do you know the word disciple also comes from the word discipline? And we 
get the word discipline? See, or to learn? To learn is, is to make change. See, if you're not changing something that's not right, you're not really learning. So, if we're learning, it also requires that, that we become more disciplined. If you can control your hunger desire, that's pretty strong, isn't it? See, already you, you're, you're looking at the clock and you say, when is it going to finish so I can get something to eat? I'm going to just say, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that repeated in the mouth of God. So wait a little while. You'll do yourself good. Discipline yourself. You see, there's a side benefit to fasting. It means that you can control the appetite. It's important that we learn discipline. How many of us have found ourselves in sin and we use the excuse, well, I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> she was just too pretty. She came on to me too far. I just couldn't help myself. Watching what we see. That means when the internet flashes that pornography mess up on the screen, we flip it by it rather than locking on to it. That requires what? Discipline! We need to learn discipline today more than ever because you see Satan is throwing all kinds of things out at us. We need discipline, and God will help us when we learn to fast and give up and control our urges for things. It can say, yes, we can be disciplined. With God's help, He can help us. Amen. There should not be anything that controls us except the Lord. Amen. Well, Pastor, now I can't give up my cigarettes. <laughs> they are just too good for me. I just can't give up that flavor. <laughs> I mean, I've got to find my little place away from everybody, you know, that little room where I can go and get away and have a light up. No, you say i got to give up that. I can't do that. Oh, yes, you can. You see, there's nothing that should control you but the Lord. Amen. And fasting is a way to say, Lord, I'm connecting with you. I'm giving up all this other stuff that's a distraction to what you want to do with me and through me as your person. So, there are benefits to fasting. It gets us closer to God. It helps us to know God's will and be empowered to do it. But we also must realize there are other kinds of fast. You say, well, Patrick, you've been talking about other people and all this food stuff, but I'm diabetic. Well, you're not off the hook. You can be, you can fast too. And here's the way you can fast. Give up TV. That's a fast. I mean, hey, Pastor, I know some things people say, well, I can't give up my little soap opera show. I'm going to miss out on something. There's going to be something a second here. I'm going to miss out. Wait now, I can give up everything, but not the ball games. Please, Pastor. Not my sports stuff. You see, what I'm saying is that fast can be multifaceted. Yeah. It can include our pleasures of different sorts. We need to be able to deny ourselves those pleasures because they should not control our lives. If a pleasure is in between you and God, it's an idol. Yes, it is. And you need to get rid of it. You need to demonstrate to God that that does not control you. How do you do that? But by fasting. Amen.
Stay away from it. I don't need it. I need you, God, more than I need sports. I need you, God, more than a soap opera. I need you, God, more than the internet. I need you, God, more than my cell phone. Man, there's some people who go around, I don't want to suffer. Oh my, how can I function without the cell phone? You know, they'll drive 10 miles back to home to get their cell phone. But if they leave their Bible and come to church, I'll go by. enjoyed the message. I know that uh, praying continually is important, but coupling praying continually with fasting will intensify your involvement with the Lord and a focus on a special prayer concern. God has much to do uh, with us and through us as His people when we really connect with Him and get on the same page with Him. I believe that fasting can certainly help us in that area. God bless you and your spiritual journey of faith. Thanks for joining. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise, there's no